So here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Here are the children. Oh, hi everyone, and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. Well, this is a special edition of uh, Not Another Bonsai Channel because this is the NABC Holiday Challenge. So yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic time over this festive period. Whatever faith you you believe in and whatever kind of celebrations you hold over this uh, this, this um, period, you know, I hope you all have a fantastic time and I wish you well for the upcoming new year in 2024. This is the NABC Holiday Challenge, which has been opened up to anybody. Anybody can enter. It doesn't matter what um, background or what sort of faith you believe in. You can. The idea was just to create a bonsai tree that fits with that tradition. And of course, you can decorate it or style it however you like. So my entry into this challenge was, was this Colorado Blue Spruce Tree. So this is the Colorado Blue Spruce Tree that I picked up from a local DIY store. We can see that branch has broken. That must have been in the packaging. Because originally, if you, if you go back to that video, I'll put a link just up here. I bought this, as I say, from a local DIY store, and this is packaged in much the same way as traditional Christmas trees. They just put a netting over it and they just pull all of the branches up like this and kind of put it into like a cone type shape. And they don't really give much care to the branches. They just kind of push them upwards. And as we can see with that one, the branch has broken off. So we won't be able to use that in the final design. So would you believe uh, from this point on, my microphone stopped working. So all of the next few clips were recorded without any sound. So I've had to record this part or the audio separately for this section. So if we go back to the video, all I'm doing is I'm just making selective pruning decisions and just pruning up the tree and trying to make it look a little bit more compact. So if we look at this branch, the one thing you need to remember when pruning spruce trees in particular is spruce will not bud back from hardwood. So if you prune anywhere along this branch, it will not bud back and the branch will ultimately die and then you have to cut that back or make a gin out of it in the future. So if we just look at this branch here, you can see a little bit further up, there are a couple of branches or parallel branches. So we have two branches at the, near the top and a couple of branches a little bit lower down. Now, of course, you could prune to either of them or in between, and of course, they would take off. Alternatively, if you look at the top here, you can see there are plenty of buds on top and uh, pl plenty of buds on the tip of that branch too. And the thing is with spruce is you can prune anywhere along here. So anywhere where you see green needles, you can prune. And what that will do is encourage energy to, to go further down and cause the buds to pop lower down. So you can just see down here, there are a few buds, dormant buds just waiting down there. So if you pruned anywhere along that branch, the energy would go into those buds and they would take off as the new leader of the branch. But if you prune anywhere along hardwood, it will not bud back and you will lose the branch. That's just a very important thing to remember when pruning spruce trees. So following that bit of advice, that's what I'm doing, just working my way up the tree. Now I have noticed that there's a branch just near the front here that's going slightly to the left. And ideally I'd like to swing it slightly forward just to provide a little bit of character. So with this piece of wire, I put a, a hook in the, in the bottom of it. And I've hooked it around the, the lower branch and I'm just gently wrapping it around the trunk. Now, when wrapping it around the trunk, you don't need to worry too much about how neat it is or how, you know, the distance between the loops. That doesn't particularly matter that much because it's not the trunk that you're wiring. It's this branch slightly further up. So you can see we've made our way up to the branch. And what we want to do is loop this piece of wire over the top. You don't want to come underneath. You want to go over the top. And by going over the top, you then put, you can put pressure on that now and then push that down. And then if we just go back round and wrap it round and continue to wrap round the branch, just move that branch just at the top, just out of the way. There we go. We can put that, that piece of wire down there like so. And that I think should be plenty for what I need. I'm not one who believes in wiring every single branch. I don't really think that that's necessary with a lot of trees. So all I need to do is just gently move this, this branch slightly more forward. So I think I'm going to cut the wire just here. I don't need any more. And then that cut in there should be fine. And there's enough wire on this branch to achieve what I want to do. And if I just swing the tree around, just like so, just to show you, you can see we have parallel branches. But what I can do is I can just swing this branch slightly more forward 
just like so, just to give it a little bit of character, maybe move it just up just slightly, just to give it a bit more character to the tree, maybe just a touch more. Yeah, that's, that's not looking too bad. And that little piece of wire that I've put on there is gonna do the job just fine. There's no need to put wire all the way to the tip of this branch. And I don't think that's looking too bad, or maybe just a slight adjustment just there. Yeah, and then I'm just gradually working my way up the tree, just uh, pruning the, the branches back and ultimately looking for that, that compact conical shape. But I don't wanna go haphazard, I wanna sort of take selective pruning decisions and we work on the, on the branches. Now, we do need to think about how tall we want this tree to be. So where do I want my canopy to be? Uh, do I want to cut it all the way down here or do I want it higher? Well, if we look near the top, we can see we have five shoots and then we have this spire coming out the top. Now, this spire is in good health. It has buds right on the top, the terminal buds. And if we look at the full height of the tree, we need to kind of wonder where do we want to, where do we want to cut it? Well, we need to remember this in tiers. It's in tiers. So ideally, I want to cut it just here because there are quite a few buds just in there. And also we can maybe, might be able to use one of these branches as the new leader. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this whole spire off and I'm just going to put my pruners in here, make the big cut and timber, boom, off that goes. So that's, this is going to be the height of my tree. So I'm just going back to the pruning, just making selective pruning decisions and pruning all of the branches back. It is beginning to take that conical form now. And th this is the amount of uh, off cuts that I'm, I'm cutting off in as creating quite a pile. So uh, yeah, I'm just making my way through, cutting them back. And you can see it's beginning to look a bit more streamlined now. It's beginning to look more conical, more like a Christmas tree. And that's the look that I'm looking for. Just gradually, just going around, just making pruning decisions. And just remember, don't cut back to hardwoods, cut back to, to where you see green. So you can see here, there's a couple of shoots uh, slightly off camera there, but I've just cut that back there. And then as, yeah, and it's all looking quite good. There's a shoot just in here that we can get rid of. We don't need that, that's it's poking out. And this is just fine tuning the overall conical look. Of course, you know, the top is gonna grow in. So we must remember that it does look a little bit flat on the top, but that will grow in. So yeah, there's just a shoot that's a little bit too long there. And yeah, there's one that's a little bit too long just in there and something or other just on there. But I don't think that's too bad. And again, you do need to remember that the top is gonna to grow in and uh, those buds will take off and form help us form a bit of a canopy. But for now, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, the question is, do I dare repot this tree now? Now, if I just reach down here, there's, this is my Norway spruce. Now you might have seen this already on the channel, but this, um, I've had, I bought this last Christmas and uh, quite a nice little tree. I picked this up from a supermarket and this was the one that was covered in white paint. Now, I, I haven't touched this tree as far as repotting it because the root system was horrendous. I pulled this tree out of the pot and there's just one big tap root with a few fine roots coming off of it. So I've just uh, planted it back in good soil and just allowed the root system to develop. And uh, it, obviously the more top growth that you have, the more those roots are gonna grow and settle in. And, that, and that's uh, what I've done with that tree. Now, the big question is, what are the uh, blue spruce roots gonna look like? And is this gonna be the same? Because this was bought from a, a, a DIY store, not the same supermarket as before, but again, it's gonna be grown in a similar way. So do we dare repot it? And I think we will. I'm, I'm curious. I do want to have a look at the roots and I'm going to try out a new technique, which is half potting. So it's, it's half, you're kind of potting up half the, the root ball. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So here I'm just trying to pull this out of the pot and it's looking good so far. There's some good roots on this that I can see. And if we just, yeah, put that down, we can see, yeah, there are roots going around the base of this this pot. So this tree has clearly been in this pot for some time, which is a good thing because the last one must have only been in there for a few weeks, you know, the Norway spruce. So now it's a question of just getting rid of some of these, these uh, fine roots just near the top. These aren't going to be become part of the final design. And ultimately I do want to dig down a little bit further to find out where my root spread is, to find out where my plane is, my root plane. I'm not doing a full repotting today. It's important to remember. I just want to dig down enough 
to find out where those roots are. So I'm just gradually easing the soil. And you see, I just want to dig down just a little bit. I don't want to go all the way. I'm not bare rooting this. We can care less about the bottom. That doesn't matter. All I want to do is strip away some of the soil from above, see what my root, root plane looks like, and then put some good bonsai soil in there. And then hopefully we get some nice fine roots developing and we can form them into our nabari. So that's the end with this. So I'm just gently e teasing this with my root hook here. And uh, just gently teasing away some of the soil. I mean, I have to say this soil is incredibly um, poor, very poor uh, quality soil. It's, it's clay-like and I'm finding bits of stone in here. I think here I'm trying to tease out something and I'm, yeah, it's I'm teasing something out. And I think here there's a piece of wood. I found a piece of wood in here. I mean, that's how poor the soil is. It's really, really poor quality soil. But I have come down to what I believe is the root spread. So I don't want to come any lower because it's, um, this is, I've already come down about an inch, maybe more, but I found this interesting feature. So these are, these two roots here, we don't need them, that they, uh, that they're just way above the, the root plane that I want to create. So I'm just going to get my pruners in here and cut that off. Yeah, snip that off like that. And then there's, yeah, this one down here. And we can see this wouldn't have done any good whatsoever. There's no fine roots on it and you can't have an aerial root with a spruce tree. It just doesn't happen. And we just have these these fine roots just on here that we can get rid of. And then there's another one just here. We just snip that off too. And uh, that's, yeah, that's not looking too bad. We do have these uh, little um, stumps, branch stumps. So I think I'll get my knob cutters in here. Just uh, clean it up a little bit. Make that a nice clean cut. Yeah, that should be fine. I don't believe there's any need for any kind of sealing paste or anything like that for these. It should be absolutely fine. And then we have that one just below. I'm just going to get the knob cutters in there. Just tidy that up just a little bit yeah just tidy it up just because ultimately you know that this this will heal and smooth out and this is going to become our our trunk in the future this will become our trunk so or the base of our trunk i should say going into the nabari the surface roots so we're just tidying up that wound just there yeah that's beginning to look quite nice that's not too bad and then we just have these two up here just to get the knob cutters in there just to clean that up and cut that back just like so yeah it's a lot cleaner and that should be fine i think that they're here over just fine i'll keep this tree in the greenhouse so it won't get too wet and it shouldn't have too much damage but this is what i found with the root base i have these two it divides into two which could be quite ugly to most people but i actually really like this i think this is an attractive feature and i think what will happen over time is fine roots will develop off, off of that and we should have a nice root spread so I'm going to plant this tree back in the original pot. And the reason for that is, is that I want the roots to develop. Uh, I, I could put this into a bonsai pot, but uh, the, you're just going to restrict the growth. And ultimately, I want the growth and I want the, the branches to bud back. And the only way you're going to do that is by allowing the roots to grow. If you restrict the roots, you're not going to get much up top, much growth up top. So I'm just going to put my usual bonsai soil mix. This is 60% grit and 40% uh, soil. Um, compost you know gardening compost and this is my usual mix for for my bonsai of course you can change that ratio you could do a 70 30 percent ratio if you wanted to but uh, 60 30 seems to work quite well for me and this is quite a coarse grit and this is actually a bargain way of doing it because the gravel that i use uh, costs uh, four pounds for, for four uh, pounds sterling for a five kilo bag and then of course the bags of compost are three four pounds each so you can imagine eight pounds for all of that and that's going to serve several trees it's a very inexpensive way of doing it so i'm just going to put a little bit more of this this uh so just in the pot i didn't act, i wasn't intending on putting this amount below it because i wasn't that concerned about the roots below i'm more interested about the roots above and how they're going to develop but i think for now uh, because i did cut down so much with this it did pretty much turn into every pot in and not a half pot but that we have plenty of roots and again i'm, I'm not doing any root, roots pruning today I'm filming this obviously before Christmas. It's been filmed in December. I'm not. I haven't cut any roots at all, apart from those ones a little bit further up that are way out of the, or way above the the root spread. But all of these roots we can just tuck in. We just tuck them in. It's just like repotting a tree in the garden or potting a tree in the garden. You know, you just dig a hole, stick a tree in, and then and then allow it to do its thing. I'm just done exactly the same thing with this. I don't want to interfere with the roots at all. We just plant them in the soil, squash it in, make sure it's nice and firm. Yeah, give it a good wiggle in the soil 
and those roots will do their own thing because we're not really concerned about what the roots below. We're only really concerned about the roots really in that root ball and what they do. And uh, ultimately, it's the health of the tree that matters. So once this tree starts to recover and we start seeing growth and buds and stuff, then we can then we can come back to this. We can come back to this in maybe a year, maybe two years time, maybe in 2025, we'll come back to this tree, repot it and put it into a bonsai tree. But for now, we just want those roots to develop and we want those, those wounds to heal and uh, just the, the, the tree just to recover and grow into its new home. So I'm just going to put some of my bonsai soil just on top because I do want those surface roots to grow in. And we, we do want the tree to, to recover. So I'm just going around, just putting a bit of a bonsai soil on the surface, I'm just bedding it in. Uh, I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm just using my fingers just to bed it in around the, 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 the outside of the, the root ball. You could, of course, use a chopstick, but I think using my fingers for this will be absolutely fine. I am just massaging it around with my hands. Nothing particularly fancy about this, just pressing it in. And maybe one more handful should do the job, just around the back, just to fill that hole just in there. And we just squeeze that or push that down. And that is looking good. And what I hope, as I say, is that by using this bonsai saw mix, it should allow for those fine roots to grow into it, and we should have a nice nabari developing in the future. But it got, of course, that's going to take time, and bonsai is all about time. No bonsai was created overnight. It's all a case of allowing the tree to grow over many, many years, and it's just years and years of dedication, patience, training, and um, allowing the tree to do what it does and respond to what you do to it that is ultimately going to create a bonsai tree. You know, there's no quick fix for bonsai. There's no quick answer to creating a bonsai. A bonsai takes time. And with this tree in particular, we need it to recover. We want it to grow those surface roots in, and that may take years. But we want it to grow those surface roots in. And this is just one step along the long journey that this tree is going to take in its life as a little bonsai tree. So I think for now that will do us. That's enough soil in this pot, and that's not looking too bad. And that, that's it, guys. So this is my Colorado blue spruce tree, all potted up into the same pot, but it's in nicer soil. Kind of leaning to, well, to the one side, which is quite nice. I quite like that. Uh, I've pruned it into somewhat of a conical shape, but this will be my entry into the NABC Holiday Challenge. So yeah, it's fantastic. Well, well guys, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic festive period, whether or not you're celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or any of the other festivities that are going on at the moment. And uh, I wish you uh, success and happiness for the upcoming year in 2024. And with that, guys, I think I'll wrap up this video. So uh, have a great day. Uh, whatever you're doing with the festivities, have a fantastic uh, time and I will catch you on the next one.